In this chapter, we're going to take a look at all the options and settings available for site models. We'll go through the general elevation and contour settings, and then the various 2D and 3D display options. We're going to begin by exploring the settings of our existing site model and see how this changes the model once we go ahead and change the settings. Uh, the first thing to note is that most things you need to change frequently in the site model can be found here in the object info palette. They're mirrored in the uh, site model settings dialog, which we're going to go ahead and open right now. As you might have guessed, the site model settings are where you control the settings for the site model. At the very top, you'll have the site model name. If you're only going to have one site model in your file, generally this is not that important. You can name it whatever you like. This is more, more important if you're going to be moving this from one document to another or if you're going to have multiple site models within the same file. Up here to the right is a uh, the ability to save what's called a site model, the settings as a set. We, there's no point in doing that right now, and we have no defaults because I've reset this all back to default. So we have no previously saved settings. But if we liked the settings that we have here, we could go ahead and save them. And then if we opened a new document and then created a site model as we just did with the steps in the previous chapter, and we already had the settings we wanted, we could just pull this up and load those in, and it would pull up all these new settings. But we're not going to mess with that now because we're starting from scratch. Uh, the Manage button is simply where you would see your list of these different items. You can rename them and delete them. We'll go ahead and remove that one now since we didn't really save anything other than the defaults. On the left, we have a list of the settings categories. Uh, these are usually just called panes, and you can click on each of them, and it'll change what the settings are available to you. You have a little plan preview, a little 3D preview on the right-hand side. Um, now, this is just a, a generic site model. This won't look like your site model behind it. It's not going to change. It's just going to be a preset set of contours and a preset uh, 3D preview. It won't uh, change based on what your site model is. And then finally, uh, what you might miss the first time you look here is the Graphics Properties button. These control the various colors and that uh, fills and line styles will actually have on the site model. This is separate from the contour settings and the type of 3D setting. These are just the colors and the line weights and colors you would control. We'll go through each of the options in the dialog, though, to cover what they do. We'll start with the general settings here up on the top left. First, we have the elevation settings. We can set both the minimum and the maximum elevation for the model here. Uh, this one has already been predetermined because we entered the lowest contours and the highest contour, so it already knows what we want to have for that. You can increase this and decrease this, but generally this would be your top contour and your bottom contour. There aren't many situations where you would change that. If you go ahead and reduce this, though, and make this instead negative 10, Click OK, and you'll see it starts to shave off the bottom so we don't get those lower contours. They're simply ignored in the site. So you see how it flattens it out right here? And we can go ahead and just undo that now. And it'll resume right back where it was. One of the main reasons you would adjust the minimum maximum elevation is for doing things uh, like when you're doing your cut and fill calculations or when you're creating a pond or a backfill volume of some kind. The Extend Min and Maximum option will automatically adjust those values if a site modifier, which we'll cover later, adjustment changes what the elevation of the minimum or the maximum would be. So if we had a pad that was cut deeper than the lowest contour or raised a plinth higher than the highest contour, that would automatically adjust it. If we don't check that and we tell our site modifiers to make it go outside of that range, you simply won't see it. It'll be by default just a brown cut plane. So we'll cover that again once we do the site modifiers. And the last value here is datum elevation. This controls the, uh, the lower elevation boundary for volume calculation specifically. Next, we have contour settings. We can adjust the minor contour interval, major contour interval, multiplier, starting contour offset, and segmentation length. The minor contour interval is just that, the interval at which the minor contour is generated. This is usually based off of the initial site, or the initial source data, so I'm going to go ahead and make this match that. It's the uh, 10 inches here. The major contour multiplier value is multiplied by the minor contour interval. This will determine the major contour interval, so every 50 inches in this case. The Start Contour Offset determines the starting elevation for 2D contours. This will adjust the lowest contour elevation if you need. The final contour setting is Segmentation Length. Remember, we edited that earlier. This value specifies the length of straight segments that make up curved portions of contours. Since site model contours can't contain curves, any curved portion has to be segmented. A lower value will create more segments and a smoother looking curve. A higher value makes a, a, will create less segments but creates a rougher curve. If this value is set to zero, the segmentation is determined by the 2D conversion resolution setting found in Vectorworks Preferences. At the bottom of the General Settings pane, we have Site Modifier Use Options. This controls which site modifiers will be applied to the site model. 
we can choose site modifiers that are on every layer, only the visible layers, site modifiers that are on the same layer exactly as the site model, or we can select a custom set of layers and pick exactly which ones we want. We won't go ahead and do that now. Since we don't have any modifiers, this will have no effect at the moment. Now we'll take a look at the 2D display options. First up, we have the display setting. But before we do that, we need to talk about this here. We need to talk about the difference between the existing and the proposed display of the site model. The existing model is generated by not only the source data, but also any site modifiers that were applied to the existing model. We're going to cover site modifiers in another chapter. However, one of the options for site modifiers is whether they're applied to an existing or proposed site. The proposed site includes the contours generated from the source data plus any existing and proposed site modifiers. The 2D representation of the site model can be set to display the existing contours, proposed contours, or both the existing and proposed contours. You can choose what you'd like. Again, for the moment, this won't affect anything because we don't have any site modifiers. Beneath the display, we have the style. Uh, since we're in the 2D display pane here, we have the 2D options. Each of these display types have different options. Uh, 2D contours can be drawn directly as generated or smooth for a more realistic look. So uh, currently we have it 2D contours. This is 2D contour smooth. You'll see a slight update here. This is just trying to give you an idea of generally what it'll look like. The uh, actual update to your site model won't take place until you click OK and the site model updates again. Uh, the next couple of options are colored elevations. So it'll actually color them so you can see it. It's just another graphical display option. This gives the color to the actual slope, so individual slopes that are particularly steep. The steeper they are, the uh, redder the color will be. And again, the steepness here can be controlled this way. The color can be controlled here for the actual slope uh, going over 50% and then anything exceeding the maximum going to red. There's a triangulated version. I don't see this one used too very commonly. Um, I believe... There are a few specific use cases of it. Uh, the colored slopes, though, can be used here as well to actually show the 2D triangles. I happen to like the smooth contour, so I'll use that one. Next, we have the border and label settings. Uh, this checkbox simply draws the site border, and that will just be a, a box drawn around the outside. These happen to make a rectangle here. I think on ours it made sort of a rhombus. That just draws the actual border if you don't have a crop object, which we'll also cover in a bit. This isn't a contour itself. It's simply the border in 2D. Then we have the contour label options. So we can show whether we want to show the labels. Currently, they're just being shown on the major contours, so only the ones that were every five set of 10 inches on our particular model will actually have the labels. We can set it to label every single contour, and we can align it so that the text is parallel to the topographical line, so the text just follows the curve around. By default, the labels will just be drawn horizontally. The last option under 2D display is for flow arrows. The arrows can be enabled or disabled using this checkbox. If you turn the option on, the steeper slopes will be drawn with longer flow arrows. This option makes it very easy to spot areas that may have high drainage flow rates. And then the last category will be 3D display. Here we have a similar display and style setting options, but the options are a little bit different. For display, we can choose no 3D display. It's not possible to choose no 2D display. And this is useful if you just need the 2D site model. Uh, it'll keep the file smaller and it won't bother regenerating it in 3D. It won't bother doing that calculation. It'll make your uh, site model update a little quicker. So if you don't need 3D, go ahead and turn this off. It'll save you some space and time. And then similar to 2D, existing only or proposed only. Again, they won't change here for our particular instance. And of course, the cut and fill, which will be shown with two particular colors. And again, these options can be controlled over here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the cut volume. Cut will be in red and fill will be in blue. And this is just an example of what that would look like. Right now, we don't have any cut and fill on our particular uh, site model. I will turn this back to, uh, we'll go ahead and just use existing only. Uh, if you don't so see if we use uh, no 3D display or if we use cut and fill, we can't edit these options down here because they won't show it at all. So we'll go ahead and we'll just pick uh, existing only so we can modify these options. The style is what will show the main the main setting for how a site model will display in 3D is the 3D style. Uh, the default is the mesh. Um, the mesh colored elevation will just go from the top, and I, I like this one. It tends to be a little nicer, so it looks like a snow-capped mountain every time. And again, these colors are customizable, so you can customize this gradient or give it different rings if you'd like. And that was colored elevation. Then there'll be 3D mesh colored slope, so it just colors the slopes instead. All those options will have an option to show the skirt. Uh, you can go ahead and turn that off. Not every option will have that, but generally it's left on just to show where it goes down all the way to zero in your actual document. 
I'll go ahead and make this a little less colorful. Yeah, and then we have to show the 3D contours. This will cause it to draw the 2D contours. They'll be projected in 3D at the contour location. That can just give you a little more fidelity in your model. Next up is mesh smoothing, which will attempt to get rid of these flat faces. It'll attempt to smooth that out so it's sort of just a hill like that. And you can change these options individually. They, of course, work independently of each other. So you can have any combination of them you like, as long as the style supports those options. Uh, and this here, the smoothing angle, the mesh smoothing, uh, this will disable if you have mesh smoothing turned off. This is very similar to uh, if you ever use the, um, the crease angle for the hidden line rendering modes or edges. This will determine how sharp the crease would have to be in order for the smoothing to go after it. You can set this anywhere between 0 and 180 degrees. Finally, we'll take a more detailed look at the graphic properties. And actually, before we do that, I'll go ahead and click OK. So you can see the changes made to our site model. You'll watch it update in the bottom right there, the geometry calculation. And since we didn't turn smoothing on, it shouldn't have to do too very much more work than it did before. There we go. And I like the way that looks. But we can go back into the settings now, and now we'll turn our attention to the uh, graphic properties. Now, in order to see these changes, if I were to change these colors and change how this worked, I would then have to click OK, OK, and then you would wait for the site model to update. Rather than making you wait for that to see the changes, I'm going to go ahead and phase this into a special graphic where you'll see me manipulating this here, but I'll have the contours or have the uh, site model update on the other side. Under the site model tab, we can adjust the colors and line styles of different parts of the site model to get the desired look. They're divided into a few subcategories. Uh, we'll start with the 2D contours. We have the major ones, minor, flow arrows, and then the triangles, border, and contour labels. And then down here, you have the 3D versions of pretty much all of these. To edit the settings of any given one of these, go ahead and click it, and then click Edit. And that'll bring up a dialog that you can change it in. Uh, most of these are all the same, except for the, um, oh, we'll go over these now. Uh, they can be assigned to a class. So you can either say, make all attributes by class, and then they'll each assign to a class similar to like you would see in the attributes palette. Or we can go in and click Edit, and we can edit these all manually and make these whatever we'd like. Now, the update will not show until you click OK to all these menus, and then the site model updates. So don't expect to see it until you're done this. Uh, for things like flow arrows, if we go to existing, there's an additional option. We have the option to change the marker itself, like we can again in the attributes palette. It'll let us change the various end markers, and we can scale that up if we need to. And again, thickness, line type, color, class, works very similarly to the attributes palette, except it's there individual for each of the items contained within the site model. In most cases, though, it is a good idea to assign classes to this. Uh, that'll make it easier in case you're using multiple site models. It's the same thing. You can have an active set of settings here. This is separate from the uh, other set of settings. This sets just the graphics properties. So you can copy this and distribute it to all your different site models. And if you're using it by class, then changing that one class updates all your site models' class attributes at the same time. Makes things much easier to change after the fact. Now, the other tab in this dialog is the Site Analysis tab. This we did look at a little bit earlier, but it's very specific. It's only for when you're looking at the actual analytics on the actual site model. It doesn't affect the contours, major or minor. And it doesn't affect the surface at all. It's, it's for the actual slope. So this one in particular is currently is only set to only color the slopes and only color them in red if they exceed the maximum category. But we don't have any categories selected. So we'll go ahead and make this 6. This will give us the most variation. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And we'll take a look at what that looks like here. symmetric and then we will pull down the slope. Now, you see how we changed those colors earlier? They will only appear when you're using a mode that includes those. So you can change those colored attributes, but those won't change unless you put one of the 3D or modes that actually displays them. We'll wait for that to re-update. There, and you can see the colored slopes here. This is following the same gradient that we specified in the settings here. So if we change this now, We'll go to Graphic Properties. We'll go back to Site Analysis. And instead, but what if I wanted this to be red as well? We'll go ahead and change these to red. Anything over this point would be red. You can see here, we have complete control over this gradient. But for now, we'll just revert back to our regular site model. We'll cover more details about the cut and fill and the slopes in another chapter. That covers the settings available in the Site Model Settings dialog. Now we'll take a little look at the um, additional options available in the Object Info palette. Most of the options for display and style and things like that that you need that were in the Site Model Settings dialog, you can get right to in the Object Info palette here. Uh, and there are a few additional options, though, that are not present in the Site Model Settings. We won't bother recovering things we've already covered. We'll start here with the first two buttons under Site Model Settings. One is Update, and then the next is Create Snapshot. Update button just refreshes the Site Model to include any changes made by Site Modifiers or Grading. 
most changes to the site model require, any settings or changes to the site model itself require the model to be updated after the fact. In some cases, the update will occur automatically, like when you exit the settings dialog or you just the display style, then it'll do an update automatically. In other instances, the update will wait until you manually initiate the button. This is to allow for you to make multiple changes with site modifiers and things first so that you don't have to wait for an update to happen between every little reshape and every little movement. When a site model requires updating, a red and white stripe border will appear around the model when you have it selected. After you click update, the process can be monitored in the right side of the message bar like we've been seeing found at the bottom right of the Vectorworks window. You can also update a site model just by right-clicking and choosing update. It does exactly the same thing. What we've done here is we forced an update, but there are no changes, so it'll finish quickly. The Create Snapshot button creates a view or a saved snapshot of the model with its current display and style settings. When you create a site model snapshot, it's placed directly over top of the original site model. We can take that, and you'll see it's a site model snapshot. It has fewer options. We can take that, and we can actually move that right away off of the real site model itself. We select both. We can see this one is the snapshot, as you can see in the object info palette, and then this one is the real site model itself. What the snapshot will do is preserve the look and the style of it, but allow it to be displayed with different display and style settings at the same time. So if we go here and select the site, and we can change the style of this one. We'll go ahead and change it from 3D mesh to 3D extruded contours, color elevation. And as you watch it, it'll update. You see, this one, our snapshot, stayed the same, but our other one took that setting. So if we wanted to look at the actual, we wanted to actually analyze the slope, we wanted to look at that directly. We'll go ahead and change this to the colored slope. We can see our original here without the changes, and then we can see the one that we've modified over here on the left-hand side. We'll wait for that to update, and you'll see the colored slope. So this one is still fine. This snapshot is still the way it is, and we can use this one for analysis or whatever we'd like without having to modify the snapshot version. Go ahead and delete this. Focus on the original. I think I'll put it back to colored elevations. And then let that update, and then we'll take a look at some of the data available here. With all that's going on in the object info palette, it can be easy to miss that some of this data is available. We can actually expand this to make it a little easier to read. And here you can get the projected area, which is, of course, the area just from the top down, not including any sort of 3D dimensionality to it. The surface area for existing and proposed. And we have the volume display type, which we can actually choose the volume units. This one's just using the document units, but we can set this separately. So this can be in cubic meters. It'll redo the math really quickly. We'll go ahead and update that, and it'll show in cubic meters, even if our whole document is in metric, so you can get it in whatever type you need. And the point of showing all this data here is, of course, so that when you're doing the cut and fill of a site, when you're actually doing your grading, you can get the most balanced cut and fill possible at a glance without having to do a bunch of uh, spreadsheets after the fact. We'll go more specifically into grading and different techniques for that in other chapters. The last thing I want to note in the Object Info Palette, though, for the site model is the modifier conflict count. Currently, we have zero. This will list any site modif conflicts that are found. We'll go more into detail on that in the actual site modifier chapter, but it's important to know that this is here. Right now, we don't have any site modifiers, so we have no conflicts. But we'll go ahead and make a few conflicts later so we can explain this. That covers all the major settings for site models. In the next chapter, we'll take a quick look at how to use site modifiers to adjust this site model.